All right, I hope this video works. I'm doing lots of new things and, well, and some very old things, but it's been such a long time since I've stared at this map properly. Um, so much so that when I finally, and I thought, oh boy, I'm going straight to the easy bits, which is right here. Um, the uh, the Russian Eighth Army. Remember, this is the last. Well, maybe you don't know. It's been so long. It's now um, the last turn of my mini game, and then I'm going off into the um, what I'm calling the December truce, where everybody's going to take stock and figure out what they're going to do. Um, then I'm going to do what I call the big adjustment, and that's looking through all the grand campaign uh, reinforcement. Um, schedules and whatnot and making a big adjustment to make sure that I've got what troops I want, supply points and so on and so forth. A lot of work to do. It's okay. Sometimes I get overwhelmed and freaked out and, and I'm, I'll be back there repeatedly, I'm sure. Uh, right now I'm not. Even though a little while ago when I was staring at this map, map I went, oh my god, it's been so long that it's going to take me a while to, thank God I do, I take notes, and a lot of them I do. I've got to get way back into more detail of the notes. Um, that being said, thank goodness I do. This is still going to take ages to get back into, oh my God, I used to stare at this thing every flipping day. Just other stuff's been um, taking, uh, um, pulling me away and I'm also I'm not positive about it yet but there's also a little bit uh, twinkle of thinking well I know it's getting to the last turn like is there like some kind of like subconscious avoidance to try to not end the game so that way I never have to deal with like all the uh, added stuff that I've got to do and yeah, maybe it could be like a little bit of um you know, like, uh, I don't know, lamenting or something. Anyways, let's get to this bit. So we've got the 8th Army here, Brusilov. There's basically, essentially, there's there's not an army, if you want to call it that. Remember, he was even turfed. Uh, we incorporated what was left of the 8th Army after that disaster. Oh, my God, what a disaster it was. Uh, it was. It was so good at the beginning. And then, oh my god, I just bit off to, uh, more than I could chew and didn't uh, clue in about things about being surrounded. And boy, oh boy, did I ever uh, uh, learn the lesson there. That being said, and then he got turfed, and then um, so did Ruski. He got turfed as well. And that's when I brought in uh, Rosen, uh, she, uh, Rosenshield, uh, way the hell over, uh, from Anatoly Rosenshield way the hell over from there and now he's here. He's been doubly promoted. I'll go through this all again later at some point. Um, I did finish my first article for my end of the year. I know I said I was going to do it in October last year for my birthday or whatever, but it's going to be for the end of the uh, the mini game. It's um, the, uh, the magazine in my uh, in my world is going to be it's going to be uh, basically issued on the uh, 1st of December 1914 I've done the first ish, uh the first article it's on Enver uh the emergency measures um um vessel uh um identification registry by the Germans uh basically declaring the Mediterranean as a war zone so that that article's done uh, I'm really happy with it. Uh, the second one I'm doing right now is a uh, what I'm calling a weekly expose because it ties in uh, a bunch of other things. I'm um, doing Zoya Popova. It's going to be like, uh, <coughs> sorry, my <coughs> my experience um, uh, as a field nurse or a sister of mercy for the um, the Imperial Russian Army. Uh, guess where she's at. Uh, near the Boog River. Uh, she works at um, Field Hospital 4 in the triage ward for the 32nd Infantry, Infantry Division and it's about... I, I'll have to take a look again but I think it's about 4 kilometers away from the Boog River 
uh, front, but uh, I've got li like little Google picture. I uh, figured out where the uh, yeah, I'm I'm having fun with that for sure. Let's get back to this. The Eighth Army, Brusilov. So what have I decided to do? It's weird to be at this point in time knowing that um, there's going to be narrative and gaminess, if that makes sense. And I try to role play or, or in, uh, figure out, or I try to justify or whatever about the gaminess into um, some kind of narrative. Now, look. I, I think I've mentioned before, at the end of this mini-game and when we get into January 1915, there was going to be trench works everywhere. Everybody knows this. So position is massively important. To keep Stanislaw is probably a damn good uh, thing to have. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do, a bit, be a bit slightly gamey. The only thing I cannot move right now for the uh, Brusilov's 8th, and I reincorporated him as the 8th Army. It's kind of like a, a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, shush. Uh, Anatoly Rosenshield basically said, there's no effing way I'm going to be um, telling uh, Brusilov what the hell to do. I've been doubly promoted. I'm not going to start telling the general who's been around for a very long time, man. No, no, no. I'm not going to do that. So, the, uh, th this Cossack uh, Cavalry Division, which uh, I'm going to have to find a Russo version of Charles uh, Latora, because actually they're there due to the fact, it's a long story, way, way back when. Trust me, it's there. They're here. I can't move them anymore. There's zones of control uh, thingamabobs. I'll move these guys over. Number 67, who are you? You are the 4th Rifles Brigade. Yeah, they're out of... I'll have to bring them back here. So they'll go to here and that's it. I can't move uh, the Cossacks anymore. They've come back from their little raiding missions down in the um, basically Carpathian... Um, uh, some of the little uh, sub-Carpathian passes uh, towards Hungary. I'll move these guys back. Uh, I don't know what to do here, to be honest with you. Um, oh, God. God, I'm ever glad I'm doing this video, to be honest with you, because now I'm I can feel the juice, the meat coming back. Um, mm. uh, yeah, uh, the gristles right there. Okay. I'll look at some of the wrinkles for the rules. I know you can always kind of move one hex, but I'm not sure about a major river. There's a there's something. You know, I'll have to go. I think it's like you're not allowed to cross a major river. Uh, from one zone of control to another. So I think that's a no-no. So I'd have to get them to force me to retreat. That's how I do it. That's why I've kept them there kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now. But you've only got one there. Mind you, you got monstrous defensive... Oh, yeah. I forgot to uh, mention it's been sitting in my, on my table for weeks. I think I figured out a interesting or a very okay way to do... Um, low combat, unsupplied attacks. So basically three strength points or less on targets that are in um, uh, clear or broken terrain only. That's it. Um, yeah, I think, and all it'll do is you have one of three outcomes. One, you're gonna take a hit. Two, uh, nothing happens or three, uh, you push them back, but n never do they ever take a hit. Um, never. Like, they never uh, get reduced in strength points. Um, yeah, I'm going to look into this. Um, I'm also, another thing I was looking into uh, to add into is low strength point, uh, like I said, it's still early days, low strength point like maybe three or less or whatever, because I'm not into this, just putting one strength point. 20 kilometers, man. Give me an effing break. I'm, I'm trying to like use one strength point for to uh, cause you a zone of control issue for 20 kilometers of... Uh, no, no, no. So I was thinking, okay, it'll cause you an issue to, you know, to get by or to see the, zo uh, the enemy zone of control. Um, 
But after that, when you realize they suck a hind tit because there's only one uh, strength point or whatever, you can just uh, walk on by. Yeah, I'm into that. No worries. None, none of this, oh, by the way, and you have to leave, you know, an extra one to get out. No, not if it's, uh, no, no, not if they suck. No, 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 no. Not getting into that, man. We just look at them and like, go, oh, yeah, whatever. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like, uh, yeah, but Chris, then they can, like, cut off your, um, yeah, of course. I didn't think of that. What happens with line of, eh? Hmm. No. Then I'm an idiot for going by and not having a proper um, line of supply. So there you go. In other words, yeah, I could do that to surround them or do what have you. Okay, good. I like it. Okay. That's it, kind of ish, I think. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I think I'll make a Stan Stanislaw somehow. I'll move these guys back. Um, I can't take, I don't think, number 39. Who are you? You know, you, you, the, you are the 13th Infantry Division. Perfectly, I can't um, split them apart. Um, there's no uh, communication way of doing that. So they move as a whole chunk. Mm. Okay, I'll move these guys back. Can I move someone from here? So that's, yep, I certainly can. I'll move the um, Stanislaw, no, I'll keep them there. The 3rd Rifles Brigade, or the 14th Infantry Division. I think I'll move the 14th Infantry Division here, So I'll, and then move these guys back here, which is the, what? Uh, the 4th Rifle Brigade. So that way I'll have a continuous line of communication, the best I could do. They'll still need three hits to force a retreat. Can they do it? I doubt it. And I know that because um, they're just dying for um, supply right now. So I'm hedging my bets, which is gamey, but that's life. All right. I'm good for that. And this will bring me back into the swing of things. And we'll go off. And, oh, I can feel it, man. I can feel it. Thank you. Oh, my God. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I feel like a, the binary Tron bit. Can we, you know, we merge with this stream? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> Matt, you know, trust me, when he sees the recognizer, he's like, get the hell out of here, bit. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, see ya.